for the district energy market, we see a lot more people, of course, moving to higher and higher efficiency. So the way to do this, you know, single pieces of equipment are reaching some of their theoretical limits for efficiency. Um, and what we're seeing more of a focus on is system efficiency. So offerings around system efficiency to optimize the pumps with the air handlers and the cooling towers and the chillers. That's the real next step towards energy efficiency in the district energy applications. Emissions has always been a factor for people. Uh, sustainability aspects, what that truly means, it means different things for different people. I think we have to be cognizant of that. Um, resiliency has a big, been a big discussion uh, for people who need reliable, secure power. Universities at this conference today, campus, that's a big discussion. So those are trends that I think that are continuing to uh, occur across all parts of the industrial environment. One of the real exciting uh, growth areas that we're seeing is in the microgrid market. Um, a cool project that the Thermo team's working on is the Hudson Yards development in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, this is a large multi-use um, private development uh, right in Midtown Manhattan where we're deploying CHP, district energy, and a really cool microgrid. Resiliency, I think, is something that universities, the cities are recognizing. It's always been important, but I think there's a higher level of uh, realization that that's important. And what that translates to is some of the aging infrastructure that people are saying, hey, if resiliency is important, then I need to look at my infrastructure that may be 75, 100 years old and do something about that. And so I see that, that, that there's a lot of older systems that are really being looked at needing to modernize those systems. And really a trend, especially on the older steam systems, to looking at hot water as an alternative. Uh, of course, chillers yeah. is where I'm, one of my focuses is. And one of the things that obviously gets a lot of attention, especially in this day and age, and has continued for a long time, is refrigerants and the transition of these equipments to the next generation of refrigerants and where we're we going and how we're positioning uh, globally. And throughout the world, the regulations and changing and, and all the different aspects associated with that are different depending on where you are in the world. And so staying on top of that and being prepared for that. Medical centers, university school districts, they are trying to outsource or find a partner that can handle their energy needs and manage their energy assets. Uh, bringing other capabilities like facilities management, like ECM, energy conservation measures, so reducing their energy footprint or carbon footprint. So all this plus the infrastructure is coming into play. And that is our main focus, to help uh, those uh, partners to uh, achieve their goals. So I think the overall trend remains more and more measurement of virtually every commodity or utility that is going in and out of the building envelope. And this is related to both the hydronic uh, heating and cooling, but also to just straight water usage. Uh, we're seeing a lot more evaporative cooling in data centers than we used to but yet the measurement uh, initiatives still remain because they have to uh, manage the water resources. So the overall number of instruments going into a project continues to rise as people look for more and more ways to uh, manage these resources. In the university market in particular, the, resilient, the uh, sustainability and carbon reductions is becoming a very important part of their decision making. So where us facility people who have been you know, advocating this from an economic reason for many years, we're finding more motivators to get the university management to understand that there is a lot to be done in sustainability and that we can support that. Host sites putting a higher value on the resiliency benefit associated with combined heat and power and, you know, the advent of, of microgrids. And a lot of us that have been in this business a long time have been doing what we would call a microgrid, an islandable uh, capability on a university campus for many years, but some of it's got a new twist and mixed in with some new technology, but you know, that's the, really the benefit of IDEA is this is where you come to interact with professionals and owner-operators that have been doing this for decades.